Okay, once again, this is Tom Grolowitz with Ben Nelson behind the camera. Uh, yet another somewhat late uh, installment on the building the electric Dodge Neon. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today is the battery trays and fitting the batteries in. Uh, this can always be a challenge on an electric car because the number of batteries you use, the number of batteries you're going to use is based on what voltage you're trying to run the motor at, how much power, how much range. You may want a few batteries, you probably want a lot. Uh, I need to generate 240 volts AC, which means I need a DC power bus of over 300 volts. To do that, I'm going to use 27 12-volt batteries. They're going to be about the size of a standard car battery, so now I've got to figure out how to fit them in the car. Uh, I started out taking a look at the car and figuring out where I had room to put batteries. In the case of the Dodge Neon, I'm going to have to go ahead and remove the back seat so that I can get enough batteries in. The next thing I did was make some templates that are the size and shape of my battery. This way I can lay them down inside the car and figure out how much room there is between the shock towers or the seats, whether I want the batteries going one way or the other, whether I want to do a mix of both directions. Lots of different ways to look at it and it gives you a chance to play around without actually cutting or bending anything. So once you figure out roughly where all your batteries are going to go, you have to come up with a way to hold the batteries in place. Uh, on electric cars, the batteries are going to be very heavy. If they aren't strapped down and you hit a bump, you hit another car, you hit something, your batteries are going to go flying. So I decided to run all my batteries in horizontal rows like that. This kind of simplified making battery trays. So what I did is I talked to a couple of friends of mine and scrounged up some sheet metal. This is about maybe 14 or 16 gauge sheet steel. It turns out to be galvanized, which is nice. I won't have to worry about rust. And I got a couple of sheets of this stuff surplus. Uh, found another guy I know that had a sheet, melt, sheet metal break and a sheet metal shear. The shear cuts it into nice square, square edges and the break bends it into nice useful shapes. So once I had the U-shapes bent, I could lay the batteries out inside and space them out wherever I wanted. The other thing I needed to do was put a way to divide the cells up and a way to hold the batteries down once they're bolted in. And what I've got here is one of the finished trays. I cut rectangular pieces to fit inside the tray perfectly. I welded a piece of quarter inch threaded rod to the plate, welded the plate in place, and the way I did that is I made a jig. This is the size and shape of each of the holes in the tray, and I cut notches out so the rods would sit. So I could set this inside there, clamp the two pieces in, they'll be easy to put in, weld it in place, move the template over, repeat the process. The welding the trays together was a fairly quick process. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do, since I would have bare welds on this and a lot of spatter, is I went ahead and got uh, uh, sandblasted all the trays and then spray painted them so that they at least wouldn't rust on me. And that results in battery trays that look like that. This is one of the single trays that's going to go under the, under the hood up in the, engine com the old engine compartment and hold one of the two single batteries in the front. The rest of the battery trays have been installed in the car. What we've got here are two triple trays. In front of that is a third triple, in front of that is a four, and in front of that are two fives. We'll get some video of that a little later. The other thing I did, and this was from something I ran across uh, back in the days when I was doing combat robotics is that the batteries are fairly rugged, but if you start bouncing them around and hitting them, you've got a chance of breaking the internals in the battery. So one of the things we did in the combat robotics was pad our batteries with a little bit of foam rubber. And what I've got is sheets of closed cell foam, not the regular foam rubber you're used to that's like sponges. This stuff is more like a, a it's kind of a, a soft rubber. And you can see we lined all of the trays with the rubber. When I laid out the trays, I made sure there was an extra half inch to accommodate all this. So once the trays were formed and painted, a little uh, 3M uh, spray, spray glue, we were able to glue all the trays in, and now the batteries sit in snugly. 
If the battery swells a little bit or shifts a little bit, it's not a problem. It also cushions the battery a little bit so there isn't a whole lot of shock. What you see there is a three-tray three battery. And the rods coming up are what will be used to hold the batteries down. So which brings us to 